First step is cutting off the old drop from last year. And we'll try and recycle that and remove the pieces. And then And then we'll attach, thank you, the fresh, freshly cut drop that Maple Intern Meg has, uh, has made for us. Uh, so we used to do this cutting and measuring each one out in the woods individually. It was much more labor intensive. So this is very handy. And we'll attach that in here. They are recommended to be 30 to 36 inches long because if the drop line from the tree to the lateral is too short when it gets cold like this the pressure actually inside the tree essentially contracts and they might actually draw the sap back up out of the lines and into the tree so you need to have that extra length to provide enough volume in the line to keep that from happening all right next part is washing the line thank you and so we've got this uh backpack sprayer full of hot water and we're gonna pump it into in through the fitting into the line they used to use a bleach solution to do this, to make sure that the tubes are extra clean, but it turns out hot water cleans them well enough. Generally, you wanna go at least two inches over and at least two inches up or down, but because we have so much lead space on our, uh, on our drop, I'm gonna go two inches over and like 24 inches up. Uh, and that will get us plenty of space to avoid the little patch of dead wood that will be left behind where we drilled last year. If you listen carefully, you can hear when the tap is in all the way. Well, not that clear that time either, right? You didn't hear. Sometimes there's a thunk that tells you very clearly that the tap is sunk. So that tap is ready. You got that? Thank you. And uh, once the temperature gets up above freezing uh, next week, uh, the sap should start flowing.